you're hosting your first family holiday ever, <laughs> no pressure. Welcome to Interior Motives, where we solve wildly specific interior design dilemmas and develop a design plan by exploring Wayfair's vast selection. My name is Kiva Brent, and I'm an interior stylist. Let's do this. Our goal is to design a dining room for your hosting debut this Thanksgiving. You not only have tons of mouths to feed, but also mouths to listen to. To prevent the unnecessary critiques, we're going to dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's and design a tasteful dining area that will leave your relatives speechless. Plus, we're going to do so with a $500 budget because we certainly aren't going to break the bank this Thanksgiving. Never hosted before? Bet you didn't think to clean out your refrigerator a week in advance so that you have room for a giant turkey and all of the sides. Did you pick up serving utensils? The spoon you use to eat your morning cereal is not large enough to serve stuffing. Hosting your first family holiday is a huge transition from showing up five minutes before dinner starts with a box pie you picked up from the frozen section of the grocery store. First of all, Frozen pies require way too much foresight. Get one from the bakery section. This isn't a cooking show, so you'll have to look elsewhere for recipes. But I certainly consider myself a wannabe Martha Stewart, so allow me to impart my top four hosting tips. Number one, always prep the food at least 24 hours in advance. Yes, you need to make a menu and you wanna have most things cooked a day in advance so that you aren't cooking and stealing your PJs when your cousin is knocking on your front door dressed in couture. It's always that cousin too. Number two, place cards are important. I know they seem unnecessarily stuck up, but they dictate where people sit to eliminate conflict. Number three, make the main dishes yourself and buy the desserts. My famous pumpkin pie is store-bought. I plan to take that to the grave. Oh well. Number four, sit out games, turn on a movie, or do pretty much anything to distract your guests so that they don't feel inclined to follow you into the kitchen. I'm not saying this to be rude. It just helps you focus and get the food done so that you can start enjoying your time together. Those tips are crucial to a successful event, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Hosting expands far beyond cooking. The food is only half the battle. The rest is the furnishing and decorating, which I'm going to help you with. Now, this episode is supposed to be about hosting your guests affordably, which you can definitely do. Thanksgiving is all about eating, so the dining room is the primary place that you'll spend time. If you need to keep costs low to host, this is the holiday for you because it is the holiday that requires the least amount of decor. First, we're going to talk about the foundational pieces you need in your home, which will cost more than the $500 budget, but these are pieces that you can accrue over time and are things you will benefit from year round, even when you aren't hosting family for a holiday. After that, I will hone in on the items that are holiday specific. You've got to set a foundation before you can dress it up. Your design style is modern traditional because you're young and you've probably inherited some pieces from your parents. Why not use some things you've gotten for free? This design style has tons of warm colors and neutral tones. We're sticking to brown, white, beige, and brass. This also works well for our Thanksgiving color palette, which means less work for us when the time comes. Of course, every dining room needs a dining table. While round dining tables are trendy and maybe what you're drawn towards, pick up a dark rectangular rustic dining table like this. It works with literally every design style. So as your style evolves, this table will keep working for you. Rectangular dining tables also accommodate more people. The fact of the matter is most round tables can only accommodate four people comfortably. And when you try to switch six people around those tables, they give off serious clown car energy. As for seating, you want it to be as comfortable as possible. Dining areas often turn into workspaces for many of us. So you want something plush like these chairs. Plus, when you're entertaining for Thanksgiving, you wanna make sure people are comfortable. Or maybe you don't, so that they'll leave sooner. That's up to you. 
A great way to maximize seating is to add a bench. This bench actually matches the dining table, which is perfect. It's got no cushion, so throw the messy eaters there too. Again, this is not only helpful for the holidays, but also when you're hosting friends, so you're not buying anything unnecessarily. Plus, if you don't want this bench on display at the dining table year round, you can use it in your entryway. Don't forget, furniture can move. Pro tip. Invest in furniture that can work in different parts of your home. Underneath the dining table, you need a plush rug. I love keeping the area under a dining table light in color because it helps the space appear larger. To round out the dining area, we need to add a bold dome pendant. This will ensure that you have great lighting for dinner. You're young, you haven't lived on your own for very long, you haven't accrued your own china, you don't have an appreciation for china, you don't know what fine china is, so you have absolutely zero need for a buffet cabinet. So for some storage space, let's add a bar cart that can be wheeled to all of the rooms in your home depending on your needs. Every room in your home needs personality, even your dining room, even if you never eat in there. I'm not here to judge. So add this peel and stick wallpaper. It's warm and it adds some artistic flair to the walls. Plus, you don't want to worry about perfectly leveling art, which is such a pain for 99.9% .9 of people. You should also have a real or faux plant. I'd go with this faux olive plant. It's perfect for those who love the look but aren't ready for plant parenthood. This is the basis of your dining room. This is the starting place that you'll build upon when people come over. If you have these things, hosting for the holidays won't break your bank. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. First, we need to ask ourselves what Thanksgiving means to us and our families. What do our past celebrations look like? Think about colors, textures, foods, feelings, and all of the great memories you have. I always think about incorporating colors like burgundy, rust, orange, and yellow. I also like to add rustic and outdoor elements like rattan, jute, and aged florals. It's important to remember that it's okay to be cheesy for the holidays. It's a time for enjoyment and leaning into childhood nostalgia. Now that it's holiday time, let's start decorating. First, we can either layer a jute rug underneath our pre-existing dining rug to add to the rustic texture that we're craving, or we can get rid of the cream rug altogether and just put down the jute rug. The latter option may be more appealing because it's easier to clean. You can just shake it off outside after dinner or hose it down and call it a day. The goal is to make cleanup as easy on you as humanly possible. It's Thanksgiving dinner, which means someone will definitely spill something on your rug. So prepare yourself in advance. We can't just put down trash bags. Next, we need to get some decor up on the wall. I love these plant prints because they remind me of autumn, which ties in well to this harvest garland that we'll put up around a window frame or along the ceiling. These decorative accents are tasteful yet cheerful, which is the goal. Be sure to scatter these pumpkins casually throughout the home. Let's turn it into an actual game of who can find all of the pumpkins in your home. At Thanksgiving dinners past, you probably had a beautifully set table. That's great and you should still do that, but you don't have to do that for every course as it can get very costly buying enough sets of dishes for your entire family. On the other hand, it could also be extremely time consuming to wash the dishes in between each course. To prevent this altogether, consider doing something more casual. People end up way happier. For example, you can use these tiered stands for hors d'oeuvres and set them on your bar cart, coffee table, or kitchen island. Basically, somewhere that isn't the dining table. The entire first course becomes a grazing course instead of a full sit-down situation. These plates are exquisite and tie in well with your dark, modern, traditional theme. For dessert, you'll just use those same tiered stands again. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Your first time hosting is going to go so wonderfully that you'll be hosting all of the major holidays, so I apologize in advance. That's it for today. Tune into our next episode of Interior Motives for another wildly specific interior design challenge. What will they think of next? <laughs>